Hey, it's Jug Lines from The Automator, and uh, you're going to see a video here following with Maestrieth and Jean Lelon and Dimitri, and we were all, Dimitri has been on a couple times now talking about this dark theme he's been working on, and Jean Lelon was pretty interested because he'd like to be able to make quick access pop up a dark, you know, dark menus in it, and uh, it's pretty complicated anyway, and Maestrieth I just invited because he's so into GUIs. So the first half of it, roughly ballpark-wise, is uh, Dimitri and John talking about different approaches. I'm going to try to put some of the links into this description, and maybe I'll try to put a few up here that you can see them if you want to grab them from the form, or I'll actually open them on the webpage where this is posted. And uh, and then the last half is Chad just demonstrating again his HTML GUI class, which is really, you see, when you understand how simple it is to use the HTML GUI class to create you know very attractive-looking GUIs very easily, as long as you understand HTML in CSS, it's it's simple to use, much easier, I shouldn't say easier than auto hockey GUIs, but the ability to customize them in which way you want is just unbelievable. So hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Oh, and if you could do me a favor and go ahead and please like uh, this video, that helps me a lot. I record here. Yeah. So, so and go ahead and explain just that brief yeah. intro again. Yeah. Yeah, so I was looking for a way to, uh, in quick access pop-up, display the pop-up menu with the black background if the user selected the dark mode. And uh, regardless of the dark mode or not, the menu was always white. So I did some research on the uh, at key forum some time ago and never not found anything. I searched again maybe three weeks ago and uh, found another thread that was talking about this that has been created maybe in the same time. And in this thread, uh, it was about um, GUI, uh, dark mode for GUIs. But I asked a question about menus, and Lexicos um, uh, had uh, this answer with, with four lines of code that Dimitri shared with you um, that uh, will make the pop-up menu created with uh, um, with AutoHotKey to comply to the dark mode setting. And uh, so he added some other information that Dimitri uh, also uh, looked at to uh, to do it for the the buttons and other controls. So to me, it's a real uh, great news because it, I, I'm not ready to convert the whole GUI to dark mode, but at least if the menu can be displayed in the, that, the menu is what the users use every every time in quick access pop up. They go to customize only if they need to change something in their menu. So uh, I'll test it in beta mode in my next release because Lexico said maybe there are there could be side effect. You he think that no, but uh, just in case, I'll create a, a beta release with uh, this feature and test it with uh, with users. So it's great, and I, I saw Dimitri so jumping in with uh, some uh, test he did uh, in version two. Uh, um, and I did some tests also with version one, at least for the, the the menu and the buttons. But as I understand, and maybe Dimitri could uh, follow up on that, it's not all the GUI components or controls that can be made uh, complying to dark mode correctly. Um, I will just show you because I think that's easier. I have an example script. Dimitri? Yes. Your mic is still really very high, deep. very high. Yeah. Yeah. This time it's louder than, than on the, the other day. Like it's... Uh, I almost jumped to the roof. <laughs> yeah, can you see if you can um, just go to Zoom and, and you can lower the, the input? Or make automatic, if it's not. What would your settings? There's an automatic adjust volume, microphone volume, if uh, if it works well for you. Yeah, below the slider, it says automatically adjust microphone volume, maybe something like that. How is it, Joey, in German? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is this good now? Yes. Yeah, that was much better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's it. I'll start sharing my screen. <laughs> And I'll post the link to the forum thread about that on the chat, if maybe if Chad haven't seen it. Okay, wait, I think yeah, I'm first going to change something here. And, and just to clarify, because I got a little distracted, I don't know if you mentioned it, when Lysico is supposed to, this is 
only for version two or it's it's relevant okay thank you oh, and it's not only for windows 11 because my first uh, query was is there something new in windows 11 that would ah. they just may it works but it was already existing starting with release uh release uh, 1903 of windows 10. okay awesome yeah okay i'll, I'll put the link on the, the chat <laughs> Uh, so in this example, I actually have done three things. I've uh, changed the title bar, as you can see. That's just uh, one DLL call, so it's quite easy to do. And um, I also modified the menu. Oh, wait. Uh, you can see here that it's dark mode. Mm -hmm. That looks real nice. Quite, and I think... You see here the, ex the difference. So also oh, cool. this menu yeah. is, is dark Great. mode. So that is also quite cool. You also see that the buttons are quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. But I have to uh, say here is still uh, a white, uh, lighter color. So if you change the background, you will not get a nice effect. But I have also an example of that. You mean uh, the background of the GUI? Yes. If you yeah. change it, you will still see here a, a light uh, yeah. square. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not that nice. Uh, yeah, the, the shading effect of the border or something like that. Yeah, I will demonstrate later. I have another uh, GUI that uh, clearly uh, shows that. You also see here that some of the, the scroll bars are... Uh, are changed to a, a black version of them. So that's also okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the edit control. I have to say if you wait, I'll, I'll just do it. I'll add here. Uh, a new edit control. You see here that the, the second edit control that I have created, that is as a background color and it changes. So that's some, I, I think it's a, some sort of a glitch. I don't know, but. Mm -hmm. And if you type, you will the text be visible, black, black on white or white on black or black on white? Oh, here you, yeah. you yeah. see. Yeah, because you black actually, on black, which is not very good. Yeah. yeah, the thing what, what you could do is change the background color so that it's the same, but yeah. So you see for, for edit controls with multiple lines, it's quite, it doesn't, yeah, okay. it's quite nice. But also if you would create the up down uh, control, it would also, uh, it wouldn't be uh, changed. So it would still be the native. You also see here that this hasn't changed at all, but I applied it to all the controls. Eh? So sometimes it just doesn't have any effect. Yeah. And how do you change the background? And could we see how it looks when you change the background? I have, I have another uh, script. Um, and if you change the background, the text should be changed to white or so, to something light. Is it something that is done at the same at the yeah. same time? The contrast. So this is uh, the message box creator that you maybe know, but I applied a, a, some, I tried to make a dark tint. Mm. And did you only change the dark, the, the background, or did you have to change the color of every control? No, here I have changed the color of every control. So I okay. changed uh, uh, the text uh -huh. and also the background color of the some controls. Yeah, yeah. And those buttons are changed with uh, the dark mode, the alcohol. And if you type in that title field or the text field, Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. But you. you but I understand it's it. a lot of work. You have to tweak every. Uh, you need to to tweak every control and get their 
get their handle and pass a command using the handle and things like that? No, don't do it like that. Please do not <laughs> no, do it uh, like but, that. Okay, Put it maybe in a just... loop. Just loop over all the controls of your GUI and say if it's a button, do this. Okay. If yeah. it's uh, edit, do this. Uh, you do this. Do, do it, it like that. After <laughs> you do it after. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But you, you see, for example, yeah. if you, you see the, the group boxes, they still look okay for my, okay, the line became white, but I think it's acceptable. Yeah. But if you start creating tabs, it really looks like, like shit. <laughs> oh yeah, tabs are not good. No, that, that doesn't look good okay. at all. This and, is still, acceptable but it, this is not what you want actually yeah and what you were saying about the buttons the border of the buttons is this what we see here for the reset button for example or yes okay but it's not that bad it looks no. correct yeah it's but still it's... an accent because of the contrast right so it, yeah it, it's, it's yeah it, it's whiter than the other borders is it yeah yeah but you would prefer to have it a little more darker color. It's okay, that's... Yeah. Are you still here? Yeah, yeah. And sorry, I had my, my hand just in front of the camera, which was <laughs> weird. <laughs> no, no, my, my uh, screen Oh, uh, it's frozen. Squeezing. Yeah, it yes. seems to be frozen. Yeah. I can okay, move now. Yeah. Do you see my screen moving? We do, yeah. 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 Ah, okay, that's the more, most important thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I find for group boxes it's acceptable, but you see that it's not that nice. Yeah. But it's interesting, and the other example that I sh that I actually uh, shown you, I I think this is also quite nice. Just change the, the, the buttons yeah, and it yeah, already yeah. gives you a nice uh, dark mode effect. Yeah. And if you create a menu inside the GUI, uh, menu bar attached to the GUI, the menus in the menu bar would be also dark. Um, I would think so, yes. Ah, uh, yeah, I've done, I've, done, I've done it. I could show you. Um, yeah. Yeah, because but, I but suppose it, the, this is also became dark. Yeah, uh, every menu you so, use. Yeah, so the fact that you attach it, attach it to a GUI does not change the fact that it will be dark. In, no, in my case, I don't like it. It's attached to a GUI. It's attached to the script. Well, is it because you looped over everything that was a... Uh... No, here no? I think... Here you are not indicated. Um, you are not telling it to, to attach it to the GUI. No, no, but what I say is if your menu is attached to the GUI using the menu bar command, then this menu will also be dark. Yes. Which yes. is normal because you 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 show that the 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 tray the tray menu is also dark. So every menu are dark. Yeah, like yeah. like this. Yeah. Okay. In my case, I don't like it very much because the rest of my GUI is not changed to dark mode. So having this black menu in a, a light environment is not very good. So that's why I was asking Lexicos: Is there a way to revert the um, the setting to uh, to have some menus being dark mode and some others being always white and it's possible so that's also in the thread if you uh, want to see it ah, okay <laughs> yeah it's also a pity that you cannot change the, the color of the, 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 the menu bar itself bar uh -huh. and the status bar yeah, yeah the status bar you you could hide it and create your own uh, mm -hmm. but the menu, bar is a, the, the menu bar is a menu in fact, it's just a different kind of menu. Maybe there's a command that would allow to to change it. Maybe That's Lexicos possible. would have a, mir a miracle receipt for that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of the time I, I'm just borrowing code from yeah, yeah. other more uh, smart people. 
And I, I just borrow it from uh, you. Uh, uh, Lexicos, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Lexicos is great. You know, it, it takes four four lines to do something that I was looking for for a year. <laughs> yeah. And this is also why I, you know, in the webinars I've been saying, you know, talk to other people, having people that you can ask a quick question, they can save you hours upon hours um, and just point or just point you in the right direction. Right. And it's, it's so amazing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the thing that I, I said that you do not need to apply it to every uh, control separately. I actually have another uh, example of it because I think this one. Well, but in, and what I was going to say is, I couldn't if you if you wrapped the whole thing with either a function or a class or something. I mean, couldn't you negate the the pain of that? Yeah, you you could wrap the GUI inside. Uh, mm -hmm. You could, could you actually uh, create a new uh, function. GUI 2 or something. Oh no, you could eat. I, I take it the interesting thing is just create a new function that will give you a GUI and that will set everything in it. Right. So, would you show right. us the, the, this code that is looping to, to change the controls values? Yeah, actually, this is uh, uh, version 2. Yeah, but just to see the, the kind two, of command. Everything is way easier. Yeah, the only okay. disadvantage <laughs> is that you do not have. A lot of examples on the internet. Yeah. And when you see something, you're never sure if it is for one or two. <laughs> no. You, you I really know. think like you that uh, Lexicos should have uh, used AHK2 as the extension for the... You, you know, John, that was the other thing that well, I was going to mention that to, to Dimitri because he was the one that was... He, he sent me a file and I, when I really saw it, AHK1, I'm like, why didn't he call it two? Like that is, to me, I'm like, <laughs> it yeah. just didn't make sense. Yeah, it will be a nightmare in the, in one year from now. It would be a nightmare. Right. We, we, we cannot complain about our gods, people. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's... Fair enough. Who, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It, yeah. I understand your point entirely. Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, here for every control in the... every... Yeah. Yes, you, you get... Uh, Can you the, do it in version 1.1? 1. 1? I think... I never, think never did. Do it. Never did. So you do a call it's... with dark mode explorer, okay? Yeah, and here, for example, you see that I I added a, a extra uh, condition uh -huh. that I yeah. only want to apply to the buttons. Yeah. Because I saw that sometimes, for example, here in this example, this isn't made dark. So I didn't like it that some of the arrows were made dark than the other ones were, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think it's nicer to be consistent. Yeah. But uh, for the buttons, I, I still like the effect for it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree for the buttons that it's nice. And um, this is actually a GUI that I made to uh, change your setting file, mm -hmm. your ID file. And the cool thing about it is, uh, it will use the, the name of the control as uh, the key and it, it will use the section of uh, what is already described in your uh, in your file or in your default values. Mm -hmm. For example, oh, if good. I would oh, cool. Um, oh, cool script. let's Did you... add, add a new. It's very easy to add something new. Uh, for example, a new edit field. Or oh, I added the, this one here. Eh? So let's now give it a name. Test edit two. And then I also need to define it in somewhere to tell it what the section is. So here. Um, yeah, here the default value we call it uh, test, and now I run it. You see here that the default value is now test. Mm -hmm. 
I type something extra in it. I click now. I uh, the button has seen that I changed something, so it's not yeah. uh, disabled anymore. Yeah, and it will say I can it will click, update the new file. Yeah, I can yeah, click cool. apply, and then it's updated. And then if I run it again, it's in it. Hey. Mm -hmm. And is for. Yes, Joe. Yes, well, let me ask. So earlier, I I thought. Apply was a different color because it was the default button. Um, I was going to ask you, then I, then I I'm like, whatever, okay. But so, okay, so it's just so. What is is if something is the default button highlighted? Does does it show up differently? I think it's just the border in regular dialog boxes. Okay. Can you see where I borrowed it from? Yeah. It's yeah, but, but is the OK, like, is the OK on your right, is that one the default button, or is it not set? OK, you lose. it indicates that you say uh, save everything. Right, I know. And, but and I'm close saying... the GUI. Yeah, but the appearance of this button, which, which one is the default button? Uh, if there's one. Uh, I think I haven't said that. Yeah, oh, okay. if I said they are all <laughs> are the same. Apply is disabled only because there's nothing changed to save. Yeah. Yes. Right. Apply could could be named saved. It would be. Uh, uh, yeah, but I. I, I, I understand the, that you prefer. Yeah, it's good apply. Yeah. I I uh, used the properties example of yeah. uh, Windows Explorer as the yeah a model the example but, because yeah, I yeah. it looked already uh, very professional. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I and just <laughs> copied everything from it, and yeah, also the way how it works. I, yeah, yeah, that's good. Because then it looks very professional if you yeah. put this on your script. Here, Dimitri, we have tabs. Could you try to put everything in dark mode and see what's wrong with tabs? Ah, yeah. Um, if the, it's not the, too complicated. This is where everything will break, right? Since we're doing no. something live. <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> no. I just copy paste it from another script. Here. Settings. Then we went creating the GUI. Okay, you change the color, you hard code the colors. If in Windows you return to to not dark mode, if this window will will stay dark, ah, um, because yeah. the dark mode option, for example, for menu, if in Windows appearance, uh, you know settings appearance color, you select that you want light, then your yeah. menu will be light. If you select dark, your menu will be dark without changing anything in in your code. Uh, but here, if you are code colors, that's you, you, you manage the dark mode um, yourself in the script. Unless I'm, yes. I'm missing something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for example, here you see that uh, the background of the controls haven't changed mm -hmm. because we, you need to also set it, but yeah. not separately, just uh, loop over them. Okay. But you know, for example, the, the buttons here are black background. If you go and it's been done with the code that Dimitri, that uh, Lexicos uh, posted. If you go to window setting and change your color to light mode, this button will become light, will become white. Uh, that works. <laughs> Oh, settings. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Personalization on the right. Uh, may, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now in your script, your button should be white. Maybe if you reload the script. Looks like a reload, yeah. Uh, actually, that is, uh, you can choose to, to put it in there or not. 
I think for, for this coat, I haven't put it in it. Yeah, so you've changed your color yourself. Yeah. Okay. But uh, control, uh, maybe... Actually, the... But if you hard code the color, maybe after that, it will override the settings from Windows settings. Yeah, you'll need to experiment with it. Yeah, because that's the, the, the nice thing about dark mode is that for, for application that can comply with it correctly, is that if you are somewhere outside with much light, you will prefer the light mode. If you work in, inside in a dark office, you will change the setting and it will change everything automatically. So you have the choice of the, the mode that you want to work with. Um, and without having to change anything, without having to change the, the theme for each application. Right. And for now it works for menus and buttons, but not more. And it's nice yeah. to be able to be to do something dark mode. I could work on something, but it would have to be set from inside my application, from the settings of my application. Yeah. Right. Ah, yeah. Now, and Dimitri, maybe you said it, but the the tabs here is this what you were saying? You don't care for the tab? Yeah, I, I don't like uh, the what, the way it looks now. Uh, okay. It it looks better than I expected. I still don't think. Like you said, yeah. it's not ideal. He set low expectations, so we are satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so That's true. a secret. Low expectation, yeah. high, uh, higher results. Or, I don't so know true. in English what is the expression, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, but, but, but you see here that something is not is wrong. But you could also choose not to change the the edit controls and the color of the edit controls. That's also a possibility. Because, it, uh, like I like I showed on the other example. Ah. Um, yeah, I, I really don't like this. This white border. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. well, well, I'm just curious. What would you have there instead? You'd have a dark. Something dark. darker. Okay. Not but you but you cannot change the, dark, the border. Um, as far as I know, no. Maybe there's maybe a style. With, uh, maybe there's a style or advanced style option mm -hmm. in the controls. That yeah. would change it because you have you have styles that would make uh, the background transparent or things like that. I've not played with that a lot, but maybe there's something that yeah. would do it. In my, and I forget if we were in the live call or what, where I demonstrated. I think it was the webinar where I pulled up the spy tool that that had the styles. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember if I can drag to it and detect what styles are there. Um, but anyway, yeah. That, I think that when you selected the control, it was in the properties of the control that you could see what style was applied to this control. That would be very interesting if you mm -hmm. could also change the, the color. And not only that, but actually you, you, you also need to change the color when it changes. For example, if you hover on something, mm -hmm. the color changes and maybe also that color will change. And if you click on it, it should also update back to the color that you set, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's I possible an, that it reverts then back. Uh, <laughs> I have an unrelated question, but it's about your editor. If you return to your editor, when you enter a color, we see a box just before the color. For example, ah, yeah, that's... Yeah. is this box made by you or is it VS Code that is doing it or what? It is the S code from? that's doing it, and you it's can also showing you the uh, color. You can oh, also change it. <laughs> that's cool. So yes, you have a, so you have a visual indication of what the result of the code that you have there, and you can change this code from this box. Yes. Ah, cool. Yeah, it's a very interesting editor. The only yeah, disadvantage is that it's quite complicated to set it up. Even now, I'm not perfectly happy how it reacts. 
and there was something that was bothering me when I tried it. I don't remember what, because his IS is also a great uh, yeah. promoter of this editor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maestrith is actually, Chad's using it now as well, because he's programming yeah. in a different language, and he, he's using it a lot. Actually, I'm using Visual, um, just Visual Studio, oh. not Visual Studio Code. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were on VS Code. But I, I think those are quite similar, no? They're similar, but not the same. Yeah. Was there any particular reason why you went with the the other one? That's what I was told to download, and I, it's what I started with. That's a good answer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chad, on the those outline of the – is that a style thing? Do you ever work with styles? On that I, message box it's thing been so it. long since I've messed with it, but it, all of the style stuff is very limited in Auto Hotkey uh, and everything think, else. Yeah. You can do a few things, but not much. Oh. Um, this is actually a, a class of somebody on the forum, and as you can see, it also gives a, a nice effect. Uh, but it's specifically for buttons, of course. Uh, and here you can set every color that you want, the background color, when you hover over it, when you disable it, the, the border of the color, if the col uh, the, it's rectangle, uh, is it, if it's surrounded and things like that. Uh, so Sorry, just to say that I have to reply to a quick email, so I'll be listening to you, but uh, just having to <laughs> switch for two minutes. <laughs> yeah. The only disadvantage I found with this uh, example that uh, to uh, set it, uh, you needed to add a lot of code and you didn't have any indication what was what. Yeah. And so I was working on a simplified way to, to set the settings with just with two colors and mm -hmm. that it would change automatically. Um, but that is, of course, uh, something personal. Uh, but I prefer uh, that it's easy to, to modify. Uh. <laughs> yeah. but the code is amazing what they can do. But of course, if you want to have other controls, to, uh, uh, the other controls, yeah that's still not handled for it. So it's nice if you can use just a native Windows thing and, and change them. That's easier to do than create everything for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Or rely on some library that who knows when they'll, you know, who's changing it and updating it and how it'll be on different computers or you gotta make sure they have that DLL or whatever as well, yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, if those library work, and a lot of times they they work perfectly, and then you can do even more amazing stuff with it. Yeah, I had another example. Yeah, that was um, and. and your uh, did you? I don't think you pulled it up yet. Your example, of the Notepad, um, Notepad in version two, the dark. Ah, so there's still the yeah, like you said, the menu bar and your status bar. Uh, you see here, if you move it, it will flicker. So that's something that I have hadn't seen yet. But yeah, that's. Those menus look nice, though. Yeah, but I haven't changed everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, the the problem is if if I yeah here everything would be back uh, with ugly white uh, rectangles yeah. on it. <laughs> And, and just because in, uh, in, in, I think, it, I forget, someone replied to, to one of the videos and they just said, yeah, but can you show exactly how to apply 
that like the, you know, to a, a given GUI, just how, you know, if you want to make that one control dark, it's, is it just before and after you, or before you um, declare it? This is the DLL call that okay. makes it. So I, if I disable it, it should. But where, oh, there's the, okay. And the my GUI, which is about the middle of that, the mygui.hwmd that is how you're um on the line 12 just in your I, i'm just wondering yes. how line 12 gets tied to so if they don't have a different if theirs is my long gui you'd have to update that right thank you yeah so here i indicated that uh, this is the handle to oh. apply it to mm -hmm. so because you're using object to create your gui is it something uh something ahk2 or because we could do the same in HK1 to create, to have an uh, object. Or... Yeah, you, you just need the handle. I assume that you can also get it in version 1, but I, I, I'm i not going. Yeah, you, maybe you, you first need to create it hidden, and then you can get the handle. Whenever well, maybe you create, on the other way. Whenever yeah, you, you create a control, if you do, um, oh geez, uh, HWND, and then the name of your variable, it'll store the handle of the newly created control into that variable, so you don't have to go and find it. Okay, you don't need control get control get. No, 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 no. Get no, no, good no. control good. So you you say uh, you put. HWND and the name of the variable. It is yep. a variable it that's just, that, it that's automatically that created. Yep, cool. that's yeah. in the options in your GUI. That's what you're saying, right, Chad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, cool. Yeah, the name yeah, of the, the name of the control is in the options, but the, the the handle is also created automatically by just putting a name. Or do you need yeah. to do two things? You when you create the GUI, well. Can I share my screen? Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going yeah let's just talk mine. about it. Yeah. I was going to share mine to have an example. <laughs> it's much easier. <laughs> All right, let me find the right damn window. Give me one more. Oh, you beat me on the number of windows opened at the same time. <laughs> this, <laughs> honestly, this is kind of light. <sighs> All right, so let's go GUI add... Uh, edit. Zoom in a, ha a hair there, chat. Thank you. Oh, yeah, much better. HWND, uh, uh, edit HWND, and then whatever you can default. GUI show, and then uh, return F1, return message box, edit HWND. We run it, and you hit F1. And nothing happens because I probably have something else hooked to F1. There's no V before your variable name, or no? This it's not a variable name; it's something different. It's not the name of the control. Okay. No HWND. Well, let's just do M. Oh, that's right. Uh, MSDBOX. Edit HWND. See, there's your handle ah. to your window. Cool. I probably don't have my message box set up okay. for that. And if you need a name for the control to do something else, you would have to put V and the name. In yeah, if you're that. doing it that way, but you can interface with the controls in any way you need to if you have the handle to the window. Using the handle, yeah, yeah. Mm. So you don't need to set up a variable or anything. Yeah. You can but just... if I already have some code using it or uh, without having to change all well, the then code, you I, can just... I could add, I could just add this. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just say V edit. Yeah. And then edit HWND is the window handle to it. And then the, the V edit is the variable assignment or whatever. Yeah. That's great. I have a quick call and be back to you in a minute. Thank you. Excuse me. I think you also can get the handle with, uh, um, if when exists or something like that. that it oh, there's a way you can go and loop through all of the um, the windows. Yeah, um, when get control list, control list, 
ID GUI plus usually on the main ID colon equals HK ID main. So now if you MSGBOX control list, you can get a list of all of the controls. So let's duplicate this line once and then just get rid of all of the garbage and then just duplicate the crap out of it. So now you've got edit one, edit two, edit three, edit four, edit five. And then if you do, if you add the HWND here, it returns all of the window handles. Wow. That's awesome. But what I would normally do is do something like this, run this, get all of your all of your control names, and then for A, B, and what am I doing? Good Lord. A, B, stir split, control list, N, R, N, and then control get, uh, I think it's, H W N D. Value control would be B, then ID, and only we'll H W N D. Is that gonna work? Yeah. So there it goes. It's going through all of the controls and getting the individual window handle for yeah. each one. That's how I prefer to do it because you can then do like an associative associative object. So um, all edits colon equals square bracket. Then you go all edits square bracket uh, da, 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 B colon equals H to the ND. Then you can come down here and say message box all edits dot edit one all edits uh, did you mistype edit there yeah i did <laughs> no grand surprise i can't type crap today so now you've got there's edit one and edit two though there's the window handles to all of those mm -hmm. and then it's just all in a nice big object so and it doesn't have to be all just edits either you could do like a gui add button my button. So now if I come down here and uh, all edits button one. So when I run it, there's the HWND for button number one. Even if edit, even, <laughs> even if, if button is not an edit. Right, right. Yeah. I, I just use the yeah. word edit. Yeah. To, Joking. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like this. But yeah, I just, I don't really do much with the stuff like that anymore. I just, if I do anything anymore, it's just either I'll use my, um, the IE interface that I wrote, or I just code it in uh, C sharp anymore. Mm -hmm. Or just use the default crap because right now this is all I really. Oh, and I can't. I guess I could uh, just basically use like a tree view, and that's about it. Oops. Uh, what is that written in? This is auto hotkey. Oh, okay. It's just a tree view, and then I just change the size of the. This the font from fifteen to ten. I thought previews you couldn't have the dark background. Oh well, sure, you okay. just color zero zero, oh, right. and then the font color of oh, wow. gray. I just hand coded it. Uh -huh. Still but, yeah, awesome. I mean, and what's nice is you can you can set it up to where like. Is that not working? List views, then? Is that what it is? No, list views work just the same. Huh. Okay. I don't know why I thought that you couldn't do that. Yeah, list view uh, with 200, height 200, and then LV add 
options, things, things. Yeah, the the top bar is a pain in the neck to uh, to edit, but as long as you don't mind the bright white on the background there, mm-hmm. it's not a problem. And there's code. I've written code to where you can individually color all of the lines of of um, of a list view or a tree view or whatever special colors and all of that crap. I just, it's not worth it. It really just, I mean, unless you're that concerned about it, it's just, it's more trouble than it's worth. And a lot of the, a lot, <clears throat> pardon me, a lot of the, um, oh, like uh, GDI plus and stuff like that and crazy hooks you have to do into the, into the UI itself it causes instability and it's just not worth it. Yeah, it doesn't look very nice. It doesn't look all fancy and modern, but I'll take usability and stability over pretty any day of the week. Yeah. Agreed. But yeah, you can go in and like change, let's see, F1 return. Make sure this is actually working. Yeah, okay, good. All right. So, so zoom in like one level. I'm just I can read it. Oh, this. yeah. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine too. Okay. Control list. Control list. Oops. Uh, when title? Do I have it? I do. Good. So M. Control list. So. I've got a tree view. Ooh. All right. So, uh, in stir split control list. So we get the um, control get. Uh, B. So now you can go ahead and do something like, um, oh, I did it in Auto Hockey Studio a long time ago, and I don't remember, includes, um, go away. That's not it. Um, oh yeah, it's uh, class main win. There we go. Oh, so bright hurts my eyes. I have a dark question. Yeah, I. Oh, okay. So it's in refresh themes. Okay. Do we color? Send message. Don't recall if that is all that's required. Oh, wait, you big dummy. Uh, no, that wasn't all that was necessary. There's okay, so oh, all right, okay, that's what it was. All right. So let's go ahead and GUI color and then zero X F F F F zero. So that should change the background, which it changed it to the yellow. Now here, um, GUI control background. Okay, so oops. 
C O N T R O L. And then it was, yeah, just a plus background, then zero X F F F F zero zero. Oops. Uh, yeah, GUI control. Oh, I got to tell it what control to to interface with. Yeah. Uh, and then the control ID would just be B. That should. There we go. That lightens right. that up. And then you come in here and GUI font uh c zero x f f zero zero f f so a nice purpley color kind of a magenta i guess and then you tell it to you also yeah. need to tell which control yeah i'll get there well no I, technically this here this just changes the default font for and the then next for the next the uh, control control yeah yeah right. and then you just say font and then the window handle of ID. Oh, yeah. So, oh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 control font. Oh, that might actually be B as well. There you go. So now you've got your purple color, yellow background, and then you can uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da, da, da. GUI add edit with 500. So now if I, this is updated. So you've got your uh, magenta color in your edits oh. and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. It's really okay. simple and you've only got a few lines of code to deal with. Yeah. And that's how I do stuff in studio. That's how I, um, it's like studio here, all theme. Da, 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 da. You come down here and uh, download themes. Let's go something. There we go. So that now everything except for this, because I didn't, mm -hmm. if I restart it, it'll probably update it. Yeah. I just didn't tell it to update it, but these are all standard controls check boxes, edit, all of that. Um, this one up here is just a tree view. All of this stuff is, whoops, uh, undo, theme, but, burn the type. But, so this, uh, see, I, I guess I was confused because I thought the scintilla control, you're, but that's just for the Just the editing, yeah. Okay. There. Just the editing. Yeah, everything else in here. I mean, this is a Scintilla control as well. I just forgot to add it to the um, to the list of things to update. But yeah, this is a standard menu bar, which I did not take the time to theme. I don't recall. I know there's a way to change the individual colors of the backgrounds of each of the buttons themselves, but to actually theme out the um uh the uh the menu bar itself i don't recall ever doing that so but yeah there's i mean on it you've got there that's yeah. the amount of code that it takes yeah could you put it on the chat nope I'm going to delete it and get rid of it for a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Because that's a nice code snippet. I, I could recreate it, but it would, it would yeah. save me two minutes if you could yeah. paste it to the chat yeah, for, for, the, for the perpetuity. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's that's it. And then you just tell it what colors. Obviously, you can build like an object that has... You know, your light theme, your dark theme, your in-between theme, your purple yeah, theme, yeah, your yeah, yeah, purple yeah. theme, whatever, and just swap in values and go to town. Yeah. Like, what I would personally do, because I'm extra and stupid, is what I would do is go, like, themes, and then we're going to go uh, colon equals, and then we're just going to go ahead and... Oh, let's see. Um, 
So background uh, zero just for black and then foreground. Um, well, let's just do gray. And then theme two, we'll do background uh, zero XFF, zero FF for the weird fuchsia color. See when you, when you have your keyboard, or your uh, carrot over the mm -hmm. code, it pops up in the color of the code. Mm -hmm. So foreground uh, zero X. So this, let's just do uh, white. All right. So now we come down here, random uh, colors, zero, one. And then we come down here and then we change this to this. What did I call it? Themes, themes, colors, uh, dot, back. Ground and this would be themes, colors, foreground, and that's all I would have to change. So when I run it, I hit F1, I get that one, and I just keep hitting it. Oh, there it switched. All right, so I missed uh, da, 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 H -B -N -D. I missed something somewhere. Colors, background, control. Oh, you dingle up nut. Da, 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 da. Copy because I'm lazy. Da, da, da. Percent space, percent space. There we go. So, ooh, I didn't like that at all. Interesting. Oh, themes, colors, zero, one, okay. Themes, colors, background, themes, colors, background, zero, zero, zero. Yeah, I'll just make them strings, make life easier. Because when you go between string and uh, uh, hex, it it can be a little bit strange. There we go. Yeah. So why are colors are there? Themes is there. Background is there. Interesting. Huh. Zero X zero. Themes, colors, background. Zero, zero. Oh, you absolute moron. Uh. <laughs> Out of range. <laughs> There we go. So <laughs> I just keep hitting F1, and then whenever the random gods decide wow. they want to change mm -hmm. the colors, it just changes. Thanks, God. <laughs> or you can get really bored and come down here and create a timer. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys, I'll have to leave you. Okay. Was very interesting. Thanks for joining, John. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, that that's time, uh, change color. I didn't realize that the. I, I mean, I've seen you for me do stuff coloring those, but I don't know why. It just didn't dawn on me that. Yeah, you just. I thought it was something more advanced than, than no, that. No, you can change it at will and. Yeah. With, like I said, very little code. Doesn't take much. But, cool. uh, yeah, it's. The the bad thing about it is buttons don't change. 
Buttons are always going to be a pain in the ass. GUI add button, whatever. And that's just because you're built with a different control that just doesn't have that functionality? Yeah, it, it's just... Um, I don't know what they're built on. I think it's some sort of GDI something or other, but... But yeah, no matter what you do, I, F1 must be bound to something. I, I think it also has something to do with the fact that if you hover over a button, then the color changes. And so, yeah, mm, gotcha. it's uh, way more uh, complicated than uh, yeah. the other controls. Yeah. yeah, see how it's just, yeah. it just remains the same. So that's the, the downside. But I mean, if you want to go ahead and use whatever class that he was showing earlier, and then edit your buttons, everything else can be handled within four lines of code. Yeah, that's cool. Well, that and that was what threw me, because Hellbent, I mean, he, he's got a great class for drawing the buttons, but then someone was saying, well, then you still have a lot of other stuff, like your list views and tree views, but th if those are this easy to change the colors on, then I don't, you know, I think they're you're working, should be doable pretty easily. Should yeah, be, but yeah. not every control is, is easily modified. Uh, for example, the drop-down menus and things no, like no, that. No, no, those uh, don't no. work. The combo boxes don't work, stuff like that. But okay. I just, I would rather just use IE for stuff like that. If I really cared, I would just create a whole new thing with my IE. Um, what was it? Uh, HTML GUI, I think. Uh, Yeah. That was it. New GUI colon equals new. Oh, I got to save it first. No, I don't already have one. HTML GUI and then yeah, I know you you played for this for quite a while and had some very cool functionality built into it. Oh, there's something going crazy. What happened to Yeah, that's weird. Oh, because I saved it as an HTML file. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, why is this not working? Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. GUI. <clears throat> um, create element. Then you would use like a select. <clears throat> uh Select. Oh. So there's a select, and then you can come in here and let's see. I would uh, parent no attributes, no style width yes. 100. There we go. And then I can. Uh, da, 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 300, 300. So now we've got one like this. Then we can come in here and change the background style. Um, did I do it this way? Background black. Nope, I did it the other way. That's fine. You had back, not black. Oh. Uh, that's all right. How did I change it? Huh. This is the... Yeah, that's the style. Style. There's a lot of code behind this. Holy shit. 
Style. Da, da, da. I see a background black right there on 121. Yeah. See, that's what should be. That's default. That's why I'm confused. Because this should automatically just make everything black. But, all right, whatever. Background black. So now you got a black background. And then... Um, Can so, you also modify the arrow? Uh, I'm probably, I would imagine, I just, I don't know the styles for it. And yeah. to be honest, it's, I just don't remember. Uh, inner HTML colon equals, uh, let's see, uh, option things, option. So that, see now it's black on black and it only changes. So now you just come in here and say style. Style equals uh, foreground white. Oh, maybe not. Let's see. Option. Oh, right. Because you got to change this. Because the funny thing is, uh, okay, that's. Oh, it's color, not foreground. There we go. Color, oh, not foreground. Yeah. That looks sharp. Oh. Yeah. And so, this HTML. Oh, and fun yeah. thing. Yeah, it's all HTML code. Well, but it's relying on the ActiveX. Is that right? Is that yeah, the ActiveX code. So let me go ahead and throw in another couple of uh, options here. That way we actually get a drop down. So now wow. the drop down is red, but the original color is still the black on white. So you could change the color of each one of these. So purple. So when you drop down, so now you've got red, red, red. Oh, red, red. oh that's amazing. Yeah. There's, Wait, how did how did that apply? Just are there each one of those are colored, or uh, how is it only applying the last one? Oh, I I can color the first one yellow if you like. Uh, one second. Uh, colors and options, style, color. I've never seen that be. Oh, because yeah. See there. Okay. Yeah, because the highlighted one is always going to be blue on white or white on blue. So yeah, it's very little coding involved with setting stuff like this and. The fun thing is, is um, function equals my function. So uh, a star, I forget, a star. So that's the first one. Uh, Oh, you know what? I don't think. Yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, GUI create element button uh, parent nothing attributes this <laughs> style text HTML. See so now, in here we can go ahead and say. Um, HTML, we'll call it, uh, well, no, I don't even have to do that there. I've got the style code here. Uh, color pink, background orange. So it looked terrible. So now you got a pink on orange button with the border of the light color border, which you could also change border. 2px solid uh, blue. So now you've got a blue oh, yeah. border, all of that crap. It's all just HTML stuff. And then, uh, so the, now we got function my button, 
So I click on the button, and of course, it's going to make a liar out of me. Let's see here. How did a function? Did I put that in attributes, or did I? Okay, I did put that in attributes. That's where it should be. Okay, BC. I can't imagine how much time this took you to flesh all this out. Or, oh, yeah, or is it part of it's just it's it's also is it automatically applied because you're just you're pushing in the HTML here, right? So it, yeah, you just push in the HTML and it takes care yeah. of all of it. Okay. It's missing something. Something's not right here, and I don't know what. Maybe IE is starting to act a little strange now. Or maybe I just didn't have fix IE built in, which is very oh, right. bad. No. Nope. You know what the fix IE is, Dimitri? Uh, it's to change the setting for, for IDE, something like that. Yeah. It just basically makes this ActiveX control IE11 instead of IE7, which is ah, what yeah. starts at, which is a gigantic pain in the butt. Oh, now I remember. Yay. There we go. Okay, so now does this work? No, it doesn't, but you click on a button, it goes and it does the thing, and then you can tell it what to a b and c dot outer h outer html oh maybe it's is it b that i send it i don't remember or is it a no it's not it's not a hmm i don't remember I know I'm sending it. Oh, okay, there we just freestyle. Oh, I'm not sending it anymore. Mm. I'm sending uh, an object mm -hmm. that has all of the information about it. That's interesting. So, yeah, the a dot three would be the function obviously that it came to anyway so you could then have it interact and do stuff you know in here do whatever you want whenever you hit the button or whatever but yeah it's super simple to do whatever it is you need to do and then updating the you could even set it up to where you create a css so that you don't have to do any of this stuff so standard button, uh, GUI, add CSS, selector, button, declaration, background, red. So now all of your buttons are going to have the red background. That's awesome. So I go ahead and duplicate this a bunch of times. Oh. Go away. So now all the buttons are red. But if you define much like anything CSS, let's say we only want this button here to have a background of blue, then the CSS does everything, and then you pick and choose which one you want to be different. So, and the fun thing is, is with the GUI, it's dynamically sizing and doing everything for you, so you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is code it in HTML, and it does the rest. That's cool. uh, but yeah, it's dirt simple to use, very little coding involved, and just super powerful to the point where, like I said, if I do anything, I mean, I don't use tree views for the most part but i think i created a tree view i don't recall it might have been 
No, I didn't. I did list views, but not tree views. But I don't. I don't use them very often. Like I said, I ninety nine percent of the time I'm just doing something for me. Then I just use standard stuff. Just, I don't care what it looks like as long as it works. Yeah, that's true. But and it's dark. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I with this here, oh, crap, I don't know what this is. Oh, that's the wrong thing anyway. Oh, uh, what was I doing? Main, oh, did I close it by mistake? Huh. OAuth remote browser browser. Huh. Mail I don't know. It's but, still a pretty cool chat. For, thanks for walking us through that. Yeah. I mean, Are there uh, examples of uh, setting the uh, the HTML class? The setting the what? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, how, how to build it? You you showed us, and it's actually quite seems quite straightforward. But yeah, how to handle events and things like that? That's that is a little bit more complicated, but if you have good examples, uh, it's really not that difficult. But yeah, yes. Um, there, you know, Chad, we we did a video. I called it "Creating Beautiful GUIs and Not a Hotkey," um, okay. demonstrating your walkthrough. This HTML, I think it's the same HTML class. Um, most likely, yeah. But it's that's been where the while. class is, and then. There's a video, yeah, Joe's got. I, I have a little bit of documentation on the website, actually, which is okay, very unlike nice. me. <laughs> so I usually don't document anything because yeah. I just write the code. If I need to do anything with it, I go back and I fix it. You know, you know Dimitri, it's funny. Um, you'll often hear people say it's a joke. Like yeah, Maestri, you know he you know he he knows he's forgotten more code than I even know, and I'm like, no, that really is the case for me in this. You know, like you watch people like this do stuff, and it just it looks so easy. You know, um, it's awesome, Chad. Yeah, as long as you take well, let's see, I started in 2005, <clears throat> and Auto Hockey was my primary language up until this year. Yeah. So oh, yeah, well, it's crazy. Well, and, and actually, for both you guys, what I was going to say, and what you were doing um, in their chat as well, just when you were freehand doing the stuff, it's what I mentioned in our webinar on functions and stuff. And, and I said, you know, objects, I use them mostly for storage and just kind of, oh, yeah. you, know, you are such a master at it, especially with the stuff you used to do with XML was insane. But that's one of the things I tell people is like, look, just using objects for that alone, it's it helps you code so much. You know, well, structuring sure. and easy access to what you want. And you, you did a great demonstration of just how easy it is when you start nesting things and you can get, get everything the way you want it. But that's that's how programmers think, right? Like, that's not knowing how to write an object. That's more of really programming to me. Yeah. Using them smartly. And that is what I like of uh, the second version. Because uh, there, all your GUI controls are objects, so you can add properties to them. Like, uh, what is a tooltip? Uh, what is the color that needs to change when you hover over it? And things like that. Uh, and it's very easy to access it. Yeah, you can do stuff like that with the uh, HTML as well. It's, uh, oops. 
HTML GUI. Uh, Which is the only thing I was going to say was it's it's not bad, but it's just you got to know HTML and knowing CSS really helps you be able to do every take everything you've done, Chad, and really take advantage of it. Yeah. Right. It's, it's no longer quote unquote auto hotkey, even though auto hotkey stuff is still. Yeah, when you hover over, there's purple. Yeah. <laughs> and that's. <laughs> And I mean, all you got to do is just add in the the CSS for it. Hover, purple. It's purple on hover. And then you can go in here and say... Uh, uh, color, too complicated for me. White. <laughs> so now the text is purple on white. That's, see, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah it, it's, there's nothing to it. It's just, you know, go to H... Uh, H3 schools, I think. Yeah. Well, or no, W3 you know, when, schools. Yeah. When uh, years ago, I was learning web scraping and uh, I posted a question. I was trying to get data out of a table and I was grabbing stuff. I was writing a regular expression and Jackie's like, well, why don't you just loop over it? And he, you know, he showed me the row and, and column, you know, stuff. And, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, where's that in auto hockey? He's like, that's not, that's the Dom. And I'm like, what the hell's the Dom? This is a long time ago. And, uh, but the, my point is you need to be able, you know, I tell people with web scraping, you got to learn the Dom. Like if you don't, you're, you're just kidding yourself. And it's the yeah, same thing. You're, you, you need to learn how to navigate Dom in a big way. Yeah. Just it's like this right here is what I'm doing. This, uh, this here, button, background, red, whatever. Button would go here, and then inside of here, I'm just putting in this information. And it's just creating a little style node. Each time you do add CSS, it creates a style node. And then the fun thing is, is you can, I believe, obj colon equals. So if I come down here, F1 return. So obj dot inner inner text colon equals so what i would do here is just for kicks and giggles let's see button then um background orange so now if i hit f1 everything turns orange amazing except for this one which stays blue because we said it hard-coded it in the actual control but with the um, the CSS whatever here, just update it or actually. Can you also retrieve the value that way? Uh, you can. Uh, so we do m obj dot inner text. It's not real pretty. This is just what it's gonna it's gonna return to you. So. You can see what it is, and you can do like a search for background colon, and then whatever. So, like, if you wanted to come in and do a regex match, um, obj inner text comma, and then uh, case insensitive background colon uh, star semicolon question mark. Oh yeah, I forgot. I gotta do that. And then no, file. but I actually mean of an object what you can change, like the the first uh, drop down menu. Oh sure, sure, yeah. Um, what you would have to do is you have to know the either know the DOM or when they created the element, so do, 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 select dot inner HTML. So all you would have to do here, you could do one of two things. You can come in and say, all right, so let's go message box, select dot, um, let's see, what was it? Uh, get elements by tag name, and this would be option, Item one HTML, I believe. Yeah. So right. that gets that gets you to the DOM. So I'm here. So let's say I want to just change that one. Change so we've got this item in an object. 
Then we go oh dot style dot background oops colon equals paint. And then we'll get rid of that for now. So ooh, 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 hold on a second. Oh, oh. oh right, because it's just the option. See, there's yeah. the option. Now the background of that option is pink. Yeah. So and then you could all you could also for or loop through them, which is another fun thing that I like to do. Hey, that so you get all of the options, you get rid of that because it's not going to do any good. And then we could just say, um, if a index equals one, a dot style background, and it's gonna. Background colon equals purple, and then else if a index equals two, duplicate, bring it down, blue, and then duplicate that, change that to three, orange, run it, hit F1, and then blue, yeah. orange. I guess I should have changed this to two, three, and four just to get past the first one. So now you can see all of the colors that I made. Yeah, you can do anything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing, I mean, this is a, a broader picture question, but the ActiveX thing, it, it, in the sense it is like a browser and that when you're updating it, it's actively taking those changes live. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's so you're not yeah, being, like you if aren't I come in here and run it. Yeah. And I bring down this and then I hit F1. Ah, poop. Oh. But it did yeah, it would have if we could have been looking yeah, at it. Yeah, it it unfortunately yeah. right. hid the thing, but yeah. but yeah, everything just, up to right. date. Like I can come in here and add in um timer Oh, it's time for my pills. Okay, timer colon equals GUI oh, G U I dot create element. So let's create um, a span and let's see attributes and uh, style. We'll go color orange. Okay. So now we've got that. Let's go set timer. Uh, my timer 1000. My timer. Okay. So now inside here, I did not global it. Global GUI. There we go. Now it'll go inside. Oh, you know what? I want a timer because that's the only thing that I really care about in here. So timer dot inner text colon equals uh, da, 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 a tick count sure why not so and every second it's going to update the tick count into the timer so do whatever you want doesn't matter <laughs> and then uh, you can do a uh, random so let's go 0x, oh, uh, color, 0x, uh, uh, 0x, uh, uh, 0, then, um, oh, I forget. Give me one second. I've got a cute little bit of code that, oh, no, that, I think that should be okay. Um. So let's see, uh, timer, so timer, color, ooh, style, color, colon equals, uh, let's see what happens. I don't remember what happened. Yeah, there we go. It just kind of, at random, just whatever color it feels like, it'll throw it in there. Nice. No real, I mean, that's as hard as it gets. I mean, you 
when you define, it's just like in version two, but this works in version one. You, you instantiate your object, you, the reset, don't forget to do this because that's what actually makes everything work. <laughs> um, but after that, you just start creating your elements. You can tell it where you want it to be created. You can, you know, have them dynamically being sized. Like, let's say we want to take, um, let's take this one with 50%. So now it will always be, that button will always be 50% of the actual windows width. And it will automatically update itself 40 percent height so now we got a button that changes size and as things change everything kind of updates itself so if you wanted to make this a little more permanent what you would do is you would slash br here and then slash br to put it on its own row uh, one moment, da, 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 da. create button function. That's interesting. HTML. I, I don't think the backslash is needed for the first, uh, yeah, that one. Oh, you know what? I think it might be, I don't it's recall. The other way up. No, it's, it just doesn't like. It's BR space backslash is the. Um, the proper way, and you don't need the beginning. I have a space in between my backslash and the BR. I looked it up a long I remember, Chad, you and I were doing something a long time ago, and it was uh, something that was really persnickety. Yeah, oh. but I've been doing it this way for no, a while. And the, the first one, you don't need it, I think. Well, I wanted to put it on its own row independently. So I wanted a line break Huh. I think you don't need that slash in the first, uh, yeah, that one. Be off just. It's not an open and close tag. Do we no, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're ah, yeah, it's a line feed. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's very strange. Uh, in emails, that's where even having a, sp you know, it, it had to be. Google or Gmail would interpret it one way and Yahoo another. Yeah, the best way I've found is, is a slash BR is pretty much universal. That's everything that I've tried it on worked that way. Um, hmm. That is very strange. Anyway, very cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you just go to town with it and just use any kind of HTML styling and whatever. Could you can you make the font size adjust to the depending on the size of the that I don't no. know. I've never tried. Apparently <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that works. It adjusted, either. yeah, but I don't know what it did. Yeah, because change it change the size? Well, I changed yeah, it to no, 40. It doesn't yeah, it's just uh, when you put a percent on it, it does not like it because it's super tiny. And now it changes size? Does it do so? Yeah, drag it. No, no, when you drag it, it does not change. Oh. Yeah. No. Which is strange, but yeah, whatever. Apparently, that's a limitation of. Mm -hmm. Oh, you. Absolute moron. That's why it was being like, uh, brother. There we go. I was putting it inside the the button tag. Oh, ha, yeah. So if I wanted to do something like that, I would do GUI create element span. HTML here and then duplicate that, bring it down. There we go. Uh, right. That way it stays on its own line. Yeah, I wasn't thinking straight. It was I was changing the text inside of it, right. not the right. Yeah. Uh, 
But anyway, but yeah, you can go to town and do whatever you want. And there is documentation. Joe has video of me going over it apparently in another time. And you've got this, you'll, I'm sure Joe will put this somewhere. So, yeah, absolutely. So but it, yeah. it really is, you know, learning uh, HTML in as CSS, right? And then sometimes looking at how you implemented it, right? But it's, I think it's pretty, once you see a couple examples, it's pretty intuitive. Sure, sure. And 90% of the world's going to HTML. Everything's web-based now. Yeah. So you can do nothing but help yourself by learning HTML and stuff like that. I mean, it's some of this stuff is like HTML4, HTML5 territory, but I mean, I'm sure the standards will move along with it and you'll just you know, learn and do more stuff. I think in the the demonstration that we did earlier, I might have done the the media grid thing that I made. I think that was at the very end of it, if I remember was right. It? it was yeah, that was like what a year and a half ago maybe we did that. I, yeah. I put the link, you know, in the chat here. But um I remember there was something at the very end and I, I think you actually we stopped. I think then you solved it and I can't remember if we came back in and I think I might have edited the video to add it. I can't oh, recall. Cool, I remember there was something where it wasn't quite working just right, but he was displaying a grid of things um, dynamically grabbing from his computer, pick like pictures. And uh, yeah, there was something weird going on, but we, you figured it out at the end. Yeah. And like I said, it the class is quite big, but the amount of text that you got to type to make it actually right. work is really right. like, quite small. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Well, thanks, Chad. Yeah, no um, problem. And Dimitri, thank you, obviously, as well. The dark theme stuff is is pretty cool. Yeah, hopefully, well. Yeah, I mean, I, I like with the stuff he's showing here. I, I kind of, I do kind of feel like, even though it's painful, not painful, but learning H, like Chad said. I mean, it's not your knowledge is not going to be wasted if you learn HTML and CSS. No. Yeah, and either. if you really need to change every color and things like that, I think it's way easier to just use uh, this class and yeah, yeah, adds a lot of yeah. Yeah, here well, you are really flexible. Right. Well, especially if you set it up as a CSS where you give it that structure and then that would applies to everything. But oh, I want to change that one little thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I wonder, did I, let's see, because I think I might have add CSS. I think I made it so that if you duplicate something, it overwrites it. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So your um what did i call this the attribute i forget i forget what i called it the selector if you use the same selector and just pass it new values it overwrites the original selector that you made so you don't have like a bunch of little css bits hanging around so if you just want all your buttons to look a certain way then you create create it with button and then your tags and then your hub button colon hover all of that stuff. It just depends on how you want to do it. Cause you can actually, I think you can do like space button hover. Oh, I don't remember. It's been so long, but this way you can say, okay, just my buttons. This is the current thing. If I want to update it later, I just tell it button. And this is the new thing that I want it to be. It overwrites the current one and you're off to the races <clears throat> and then button hover you can do that as well same basic principle is it uh, compatible with uh, version 2 it should be i mean it's all the same i'm i'm not going to say 100% yes but 
most likely. Uh, if not, you'll probably just have to change a very little bit of code. So yeah, I thought so. But I'm not going to take the time to port it to version two for two reasons. And the reason number one, I'm lazy. Reason number two, I don't care. Yeah. You should see the stuff he's been doing in C sharp I mean, with the GUI stuff. It's it's really cool. Yeah, C sharp is ridiculous. You can do like everything you do in this, you can do in C sharp natively. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I don't really have anything that I can show right offhand, but you build the... I could be wrong, but I think, Chad, you, I mean, I have a video on that. I think one day you were just kind of showing me, and I, I still recorded it and shared it just because it was interesting. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable how <clears throat> customizable GUIs are in C Sharp or... Any other language other than AutoHotKey, to be honest, because AutoHotKey it's just a wrapper, right? I mean, for the most part, yeah, it's just a wrapper for. I don't. I think it's written in C sharp or C or C plus plus or something. I forget what it's written in. But C plus plus, I think. Yeah, and he never updated it to do anything with it because it's a lot of extra busy work and a lot of extra code for visuals which i mean if it's that important to you either go to another language or get your get your hands dirty as hell yeah because he's not going to take the time and i can't say i blame him because just that little that class that i wrote there took me about a month and a half of eight hour days seven days a week to write so it was it was bad. Oh, okay, yeah, there's the C sharp video. Yeah, that was. But again, yeah, yeah. It, which which I know, and I'm not blaming you, Mister, because because at first you put in all the the effort in the first place. But for those of us who you know having it documented in a couple of simple videos to that, which is why and hopefully you also liked it too, demonstrating the usage of it, right? Really can open people's eyes and go. It's not rocket science. You know, you've done all the work. Now take advantage of it. Yeah, by all means. It's it's not difficult to it's not difficult to use and just like I said, all you gotta really do is learn a little bit about CSS and HTML and there's nothing once you know that, there's nothing to it. And you can use it and I hooked into all of the basic stuff on click stuff and whatever to to create launching of functions and doing whatever you need to do and yeah it's it's really it's really simple. But anyway, I'm gonna get thanks going. Again. I got yeah. stuff to thanks do. Thanks for joining. Yeah. And Dimitri, thanks again, man. Enjoy your vacation. Okay. Thanks. See you. Have a nice uh, afternoon. Thanks. Bye.